Uthman ibn Amr, the, um, the trickster among the Sahaba, had a problem. He had a drinking problem. And he was being punished on one occasion. And certain persons started to speak bad of him. And the Messenger والسلام, said, don't curse your brother. Because what? He loves in Allah. He, in the, he, loves Allah he loves Allah and his messenger. He loves Allah and his messenger. Even though he's a sinner, he loves Allah and his messenger. You see it so many different occasions. There's not enough time to go into all of these examples. But I will mention one more example. There's a woman who came to the Prophet Sallallahu She confessed that she committed adultery. And the Prophet said, Oh, go back to Miktoba. You, you know, maybe, you know, it was really nothing, you know, other than something very small. And so, go make Toba. The Prophet so I said, kept sending her away. They said, well, maybe you're trying, you're trying to deal with me in the same way you dealt with Ma'is ibn Malik, who was another man who, a man prior to her, had come to and confessed uh, of adultery. And the Prophet so gave him his purification. But this woman comes and, and then the prophet and she's trying to turn her away. He doesn't, he's not obsessed with trying to point, punish her. He knows what the head to head is. You know, go and make toba. And so she goes, I'm pregnant. And then the prophet turns and says to her, go have your baby. She leaves. And after she gives birth, she returns to the messenger. Then she has the baby with her and says, Ya Rasulullah, I've given birth. Give me my purification. And then the Prophet said, Don't go and feed your child, nurse your child until it's weaned off of your milk. Two more years. She could have fled at any time. She could have left Medina. You know. She leaves and then comes back after two years. And then she has the baby and the baby is holding a piece of bread in his hand to indicate that this baby is no longer drinking my milk. He's eating real food now. And then the Prophet said, so now at this moment, once he realizes her sincerity, that, that he then orders her to receive her purification. And then after she dies, the Prophet, he prays over her. Which is really interesting because we learn from the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, that the Imam, the leader of the community, should never pray over a sinner because it belittles the sin. This is like when one occasion a man, he was about to lead the prayer, and then he asked, is there anyone to whom this man owes a debt? And then somebody speaks up, say, yes, Rasulullah, I, he owes me this much money. And then the prophet turns to the companions and say, فَصَلُّوا عَلَىٰ صَاحِبِكُمْ Then pray over your brother. He leads them. Not the prophet's prayer, someone else's prayer, which we know not really guaranteed to be accepted. A prophet's prayer would be accepted. And of course, the prophet needs to go gather up money for the debt, the man's debt. But this case, the prophet, he prays over this woman. And he says that if her toba had to be distributed and divided among the people of Medina, then it would be enough for the people of Medina. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive every single one of them. I mean, Yom al Qiyamah, when they meet Allah, no hisab, don't worry about it. In other words, it's a sincere toba. So the Messenger Alayhi Salaam, he was a mercy to everyone, and most importantly, a mercy to his community. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we experience a similar, similar mercy as the mercy shown by a Messenger Alayhi Salaam, and of course shown by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his messenger.